Hello there. I'm Linda Walker, and I'm from the Stark County Sheep Committee. And this is Sarah Schilling. She's from the Stark County Sheep Committee also, but she's also an alumni uh, from 4-H, and she show breeders and wool. And today, we're going to show you what to do with your wool after you share it off. Sarah, what uh, kind of wool is this? What, what's this off of? What breed? This is off of a merino sheep, so uh, um, it would be classified as a fine wool breed. Fine wool breed. And how many classifications are there? There's fine wool, uh, medium wool, and long wool. We also have natural colored uh, wool also, correct? Yes, yeah. Okay. And your merino is one of your finest. Yeah. In your that you would find in uh, your wool categories and hand spinners just love this kind of wool, right? It's very soft. Very Marino's soft. known for the softness. Yes. Um, this fleece that we have today, we're going to show you all the imperfections, of what you need to look for in order to get a nice clean fleece. So we'll start, Sarah. Where, what would you rec uh, recommend in telling the kids? what to do. This sheep was not blanketed. So as you can see there's a lot of hay, dirt, um, it's not a clean fleece. There's a lot of hay and stuff in it. And fine wool breeds, uh, the merinos and rambolets, those are ones that you can blanket. So if you put a blanket on a merino you will have a much cleaner fleece than this. Um, on this back side right here I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to show you there's a little bit of just a tiny bit of manure, but this darkness here is from the lanolin, and that will wash out. That's not a, a serious thing to worry about. Once you wash it, it'll it'll come out. But you don't want to wash it for the fair. You want to keep it as is, like this. Um, what are some of the other things that you want to do with your fleece? You want to skirt it. So when, once you take it off the sheep, you want to take off any edges that might have, aren't long enough or have just a lot of uh, mud or manure in it. You want to take all those sections out and you'll want to uh, pick all the hay and bits out of it. So my suggestion is, is once your fleece is taken off of your animal, uh, get a sheet and pull up. Put it out on that sheet and spread it out and then go around. And that's what's called the skirting. And you want to go out the outer part of the fleece, correct? Yeah. And pick out anything that looks like it shouldn't be in there. Because when they go to hand, when they process these, and if there's any kind of little bit of chaff of uh, vegetation or anything in them, that's going to make your end product itchy. So you want to get that out. Um, and it's just time, a little time consuming, but um, you'll find that you'll have a nice fleece after you have done that. What happens after you're done skirting with it, Sarah? After you have it all cleaned and ready to take to the fair, you'll want to put it in a clear plastic bag. And um, I recommend putting a bar of Irish Spring soap in it. That'll keep any mothballs out and keep the fleece smelling as fresh as a fleece can once you get it off the sheep. Um, one other thing I would suggest, uh, if you would happen to put it in a uh, the cotton um, bed sheet that you would use to put out, you can tie that up and put the bar soap in and hang it somewhere where mildew will not exist. So your fleece will not smell like mildew. You don't you don't want that to happen to it. So we're at the fair and we're having the contest and what typically happens during that time? So you'll bring out all the fleeces and the judge will lay out each fleece by the class. So he'll judge the pine wool, he'll judge the long wool and medium wool and then there's a, like I said, a natural wool class. And he will be looking for cleanliness, uh, the strength of a fleece, if it's a uh, good strong wool, he'll look for the crimp in it, if it's a fine wool, so um, the fineness of it. And we'll have some other samples also at a later date with a video showing you the different fibers. Yeah, so this is a fine wool breed, so they're looking for the crimp in that wool. 
that's the little crinkles in there that's desirable with this breed. So looking for the strength in it. So they'll pull a little staple out and they'll pull it like that to make sure that it's nice and strong and does not fall apart or is uh, flimsy at all. The crackling, they want to hear that crackle. So they look for cleanliness, uh, the certain qualities that need to be present and that breed of sheep. During the year when you're raising this, you want to make sure that your animal is not stressed. You don't want to use a ewe that you have bred and is going to land because you're going to have what's called breakage in your fibers. And that's where that, when Sarah was showing you, where you pull out the um, a locket of this and test it. And if it that breaks along the way sometime in that uh, animal's life, um, there was some kind of stress. So you don't want that. Um, some people who uh, raise for the fleeces will have a weathered flock. And that is nothing more than a male that's been castrated and you're, the whole purpose behind it is just to raise the fleece off of that animal and you're not gonna get the stress like you would with a ewe. It doesn't have to be but that's just what some people do to be guaranteed that you're going to get a nice fleece. You want to be concerned with your marketing technique. You want to get out and you want to market your, um, your fleece with the hand spinners. Um, there's lots of guilds out there that you can write letters to and let them know that um, they can come to the fair and buy a nice quality fleece. Stark County is the only county in the state of Ohio that does this project. Um, we run it through our sale, just like all the other live uh, stock, and it's been nice, and we've had a lot of um, good turnout in the past years of, of doing this. I've been doing this for over, I believe, 20 years now. So have fun with it. It's a great project. We want to thank Sarah today for helping me with the wool and do you have any last words to share with the kids? Uh, yes, if you have more than one sheep uh, or more than one fleece you can bring two fleeces and you also can bring a lamb fleece so that would be uh, a fleece that you take off of a lamb under a year old. Uh, when you bring your fleece to the fair if you have extra wool at home we would like to see the 4 bring a project with it. So whether it's needle felting or if you yourself do hand spinning, knitting, anything like that, it would be really cool to bring that with your fleet. Yes, we're going to do a big display this year um, in the Grange building. So we have plenty of space to uh, display any projects that you kids will do. And if you need help, we're here to help. So look for later videos on what you can do with your fleece.